Hello there, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase, the show where we take all of your questions from YouTube, Twitter, Stack Overflow, wherever we can find them, and we give you answers right here. And today we have one of my favorite people in the entire world, Roman Nurek. And Roman is from Firebase UX, but he's also one heck of a beatboxer. Let's answer some questions. This first question comes from Dan on Twitter. And Dan asks, is it a good idea to use Cloud Functions for doing all database reads and writes for security reasons primarily? So Dan, you can use Cloud Functions to do reads and writes in proxy to your Firestore database. But if you're worried about security, Firestore has its own security rules language where you can achieve that and it's much easier and it's only dealing with one service instead of two services. And also with Firestore, you end up getting that nice, awesome, real-timey nature. So if one user updates data remotely, it just automatically updates in your app. And that's not something you would get with Cloud Functions. But where I like to use Cloud Functions is for reads when I use it with Firebase Hosting. So Firebase Hosting, I can deploy static files and super low latency CDN servers all around the world. And if I use that in conjunction with Cloud Functions, I can actually say every five hours or so, I want to regenerate this file and store that response for a certain amount of time in those edge servers. So if that file only updates every so often, it's really, really good because it will be a super, super fast read. Dan. Great question, and thanks for asking. Ba -boom -boom. Next question. So this next question comes from David E. Wait, that's you, David East. Yeah, I, I asked my question. Host question. Host question. So your question is, what are the best practices for showing data updates in my UI? I always want to do cool animations and reordering, but I'm not sure if that's too busy. That's a really fantastic question, because a lot of people think that, hey, real time means that everything in my app and is, is real time, and it's always real time. But I think the important thing to think about is, what are the user journeys? What are the different tasks that people are trying to do in your app? So you know, there are going to be a lot of situations where like you're browsing through something casually, like a social stream or whatever, and you want things to be real time and updating, because I'm just casually interacting with something. But I think when, when the journey is, I'm, you know, I, I decide to dive into a piece of content in and interact with it, I think that's a really great moment where you really have to think about, do I still want this to update all the time? Or do I want to kind of pause and like snapshot what the user is looking at? A good example is actually something we do in the Firebase console uh, for uh, Cloud Functions for Firebase, where when you're looking at the logs uh, for Cloud Functions, they, they're just constantly like streaming and updating. But if now you like see a log that you're worried about, you can actually hit the pause button and uh, interact with that log, expand it, collapse it, whatever. And also like scroll down a little bit to see if there's anything else that happened just before, like a crash or an error. Um, and so th that's something to keep in mind. Uh, I think you want to be really careful about, you know, is this something where it's expected to be real time or is this uh, a task that's expected to kind of be paused? And sometimes maybe the right answer like in functions is to just give the user the option to just like halt things for a moment. If I want to affect something uh that is from the structure, I should probably give the user either more control over that or I should just pause from being able to, you know, not have them chase down some div on the screen that they're trying to click because I keep just moving it everywhere. Yeah, that's the one of the most frustrating things is when like I expect to be interacting with something and then things are just changing underneath, like underneath my my finger. The worst is like, you know, those examples where like you're uh, you're typing a search. And then it's doing autocomplete in the background, and it's like trying to be smart. And then you're about to click on the thing, but then a thing pops up, and you click on the wrong thing accidentally. It's like super, super frustrating. So again, like you want to really avoid that. One of the best ways to avoid it is to observe users. And if they actually make mistakes like that, then you know that's a situation that you may need to rethink if you're if you, it really should be updating or if it should really be real time or not. Great answer. You heard it here first. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Next question. This next question comes from Patrick. And Patrick asks, what are some good tips for onboarding user into your website or app? That's a really good question. It's, I think onboarding is one of the most interesting and challenging problems in UX. 
Now, there's no there's no right answer for onboarding, and every onboarding problem you have is going to be a little bit different. But I think that you know the the way in which you do onboarding successfully is through experience and testing. I think the the number one thing you can do is come up with a couple of different options that you're happy with. All these options work well. Um, but then using a product like A-B testing, Firebase A-B testing, to see which of these is the most successful. Um, and define. I would make sure to define success in a way that makes sense for users as well. Not just thinking about conversions, but you know uh, which of these options leads to the most, uh, the, the users being the most engaged or doing the most uh, things in your app after they onboard uh, that they want to do. So I, I would definitely think about A-B testing as one way to decide between a couple of really great onboarding options you have. But if you're looking for some good kind of general tips, I definitely say you know be really focused and think about what are the things that the user absolutely needs to do uh, before they just get into the app and start exploring. Um, and also, just be really careful not to overcomplicate things. Um, and all, actually, you know, what's most important, something that is really, really important to mention, is transparency. You also want to be really, really careful not to do stuff behind the scenes that the user may not expect for you to do. I think you know, A/B testing uh, is really important. Um, transparency, and then also just re staying really, really focused in in how you do onboarding. Those are kind of some of the best tips that I can offer. Great question, Patrick. Well, that's all the questions that we have today. Thank you all so much for sending them in. And thank you to Roman Nurek for coming in and helping us answer these. And if you have any questions that you want to ask, make sure to go on Twitter, YouTube, Stack Overflow, my personal email. No, not that one. Uh, but just tag it, hashtag Ask Firebase, and we will answer it right here on this show. So thank you all for stopping by. If you liked this, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and to subscribe for all the brand new content that we have coming out. So thank you all so much and we will see you in the next episode of Hashtag Firebase. Next question.